And then we must realize that we are called to be his witnesses. Notice, if you will, that before they got caught off gazing into heaven, Jesus told them that you've got a job to do, and your job is to be my witnesses. In other words, he has not called us to be gazers. He's called us to be witnesses. He's not called us solely to shout about going to heaven. He's called us to talk about going into the world and telling everybody that there is a Savior who can save you from your sins. One songwriter said, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, uh, we are not called just to gaze. Uh, we are called to be witnesses. Uh, we are called to testify. Touch somebody and say, testify. Testify, what does it mean? I'm not talking about testify in terms of just getting up in testimony service, giving honor to God, to the pastor, to the first lady. Thank God for being here today. No, I'm not talking about that kind of testimony. But to testify means to show. It means to confirm. It means to live out, to bear out. It means to demonstrate and to exemplify and to give some evidence. I believe it was St. Francis of Assisi who said uh, uh, testify often and if necessary use words. In other words uh, you ought to be a living testimony. Uh, your life ought to be a demonstration of the love of God. Uh, your life ought to be the evidence that there is a God uh, in heaven. Uh, it means to give confirmation, to give outer affirmation, substantiation, and verifiable proof and logical support that yes, God is real. Uh, my sisters and brothers, it's about your life and your lips. It's about your words and your works. It's about your worship and your witness. David put it this way, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. The word say so in the Hebrew tongue is omar, which meant to tell, to make known, to make public, to advertise, to publish, to broadcast, to get the word out. Saints of God, everybody else is getting their word out. How about we get our word out? You heard about the party. You heard about the gathering. You heard about the function. You heard that this one beat their wife. That one shot that one. We need to get the word out that somebody healed my body. Somebody touched my life. Somebody delivered me from my drug habit that there is a God and the problem is that most within the body of Christ are so enamored and narcissistic and so lays our fair and caught up in themselves and their comfort and convenience that we don't get the word out the problem is that the church runs and shouts and Dances and jerks and hoops and slides and dips and does the electric slide. Oh my God, because we've gotten used to being church goers and not witnesses for the Lord. You see, the very idea of witness stems from the Greek word where we get our word martyr. It means that we have to come as a servant and not a celebrity. Oh, God, help me preach in here today. Uh, uh, I said as a servant, and I, I, I'm, I'm so tired of, of, of church spoken preachers wanting to be more celebrity than servant. Uh, uh, where we gotten caught up in the world where we claim that going on reality TV is to spread the word of the Lord. No, that ain't what it is. That's so that we can become more of a celebrity. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in here today. Uh -huh. We come to be servants and not celebrities. It means we have to come saying just as I am. It means that we're traveling to the cross expecting 
something to bleed. It means that we live on the altar and not on the throne. It means we live as an army and not as if we are the audience. It means that our chief aim and purpose and desire is to please he who is our king of kings and our lord of lords. That's what it means to be a witness for the Lord. And I just came by to tell you, uh, you know what? He didn't call you to be Kojic. He didn't call you to be Baptist. He didn't call you to be Methodist. He called you to be a witness. He didn't call you to just be a preacher. He called you to be a witness. He didn't call you to be a gossiper or a slanderer. He calls you to be a witness. He didn't call you only to holiness, but he called you to be a witness. And here's what he said. Not only am I calling you to be a witness, but he said, I'm giving you power. Watch this, because sometimes uh, we don't really understand that text in Acts 1 and 8. And we talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to live right. Power to give right. But notice, if you will, in the text uh, that the only thing he associated with the power, he said, you shall receive power and you shall be my God help me preach in here today. My witnesses. How come the church is claiming the power of the Holy Ghost to do everything but witness? Power to preach. Power to sing power to shout, power to live, uh, but we won't even tell our children, our neighbors, our relatives, uh, the folk that we work with about the Lord. He 